This video will be a look at the Ravens passing attack and specifically how it aligns with or differs from other passing games around the NFL. And I do have some kind of grand or lofty goals with this. Now, now up front, I'm not going to be pushing an agenda here on either side. I will present, hopefully across two videos or maybe three if you guys enjoy them, uh, plays that the Ravens use consistently that are similar or even in some cases identical to plays used by the Chiefs, Bills, Titans, Chargers, or Eagles, respectively. This first video is going to be broken up into three concepts, or three play concepts. First, we'll look at a wide delay concept with a backside dig route as the final target in, in that particular play. Second, we'll take a look at what was the Ravens' kryptonite from this year. We all know that the stick zero blitz concept def that the Dolphins defense used so often in week 11. I won't show exact plays, uh, me meaning that instead for that sticks cover zero part of this video, I will be showing how the different teams attack the Dolphins. And finally, we'll take a look at one of the most controversial plays from the Ravens' season, their failed two-point conversion attempt with 12 seconds left during the 20-19 loss to the Steelers in week 13. I found the Bills using this exact same concept over and over again on third and fourth down situations really since 2020. So just to preface it, I'll be honest with you, I did not have to look very hard to find similar or identical concepts. Uh, besides Ravens games, I only used two other games for this film study. Chiefs Bills in the playoffs and Titans Dolphins from week 17. Uh, I was able to find so many similar concepts that are utilized. I'll be honest with you, it might burst some bubbles in terms of people who think the Ravens passing attack is such an outlier. However, in some cases, you will see that there are some additional elements that other teams add to their plays that might be lacking in the Ravens offense. And specifically, that could be in the form of unique for formations, motion, or pick rub concepts to help receivers get open easier. All right, this first concept that I'm going to show the Ravens play first, so we have Ravens numbers here. Devin DuVernay is going to go in motion from left to right. Pat Ricard is going to be the slot slash t uh, tight end who's on the field for this play. Marquise Brown and DuVernay are essentially going to run clear out routes. Bateman's going to run a backside drag. He's number 12 that's on the left side of the screen. I will. The second play that I will show that matches this identically is a Chiefs play from their playoff win over the Bills. So the intended target here, or the guy who catches the ball, is going to be Pat Ricard. I actually think it's a great catch by him because the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Let's look at the All-22 first. There's Ricard. He's the, Ricard. He's the slot tight end to the right. Duvernay is going to go in motion and then run a wheel down here between the bottom, bottom of the numbers and the sideline. Marquise Brown is running a clear-out route up the seam. The Ravens used the running back Devonta Freeman to protect off the left edge opposite the side that he lined up, and we get a big completion down the right sideline by Ricard. I believe this was the first possession of the third quarter for the Ravens where Ricard had maybe three or four catches on the drive, and they really took advantage of some of these soft quarters-type coverages that the Vikings, Bills, and Bengals will play, leaving a lot of space or room open in the flats, particularly late. All right, so when we get to the end zone angle, you'll see that there was pressure on Lamar um, off the backside. A D-tackle also beat an interior lineman as well. This D-end initially is left unblocked. Freeman and Bozeman are supposed to protect off that edge, and you can see they barely slow him down. There's also interior pressure. And finally, the D-end that Ricard was initially entangled with, I think, actually tipped the football. All right, so let's see how this compares to another team in the NFL that runs the, uh, the similar play. Actually, the exact same play. Travis Kelsey is in the slot as the H-back to the right. The running back is on the opposite side, so this is B-Gun. Nicole Hardman's going to go in motion. He's going to run a wheel between the bottom of the side of the numbers and the sideline. What was the number one receiver runs a seam clear-out route, and then Travis Kelsey initially stays into block. Now, there is a blitz off the outside edge, so he doesn't really touch anyone. But, but the point of this, at least for this exercise of this film study, is that his assignment is exactly the same as Ricard's was. He's to help protect off the edge initially and then delay release out into the flats. Now, now, the Bills played a different coverage here. They actually blitzed the safety or a DB off the edge to the boundary. There's another element to this as well. You can see Mahomes was not pressured at all. You'll get the end zone angle here so you can confirm it. Mahomes is settled back in his drop, whereas Lamar kind of felt the pressure coming from his left and moved out to his right. It's the same protection scheme, though. The running back is, is responsible for the edge opposite where he lined up. Now, the plays are being run in opposite directions. From the standpoint of the Ravens, they were left to right on your screen. For, for the Chiefs against the Bills here, they were right to left. So I know that we're talking about mirror images of each other. But let's look at the elements. You have a guy in motion who's running a wheel as a clear-out route, essentially. You have what was the number one receiver running a seam go up the hash. And then a backside dig route coming from the other side of the field that could be used as a late-release valve. Chiefs, guy in motion. 
is going to run a wheel up the sideline to the right. Then the number one receiver who was on that same side or lined up on that same side is running a go. Now he's a little bit wider. He's a little bit closer to the top of the number, so the spacing's different. And then there's the dig on the back side. As we stack these plays next to each other and we get one last look at it, I guess the main difference is that the, the Chiefs utilize Travis Kelsey, a guy who can get considerable yards after the catch for being a tight end, whereas the Ravens used a fullback who occasionally masquerades as a tight end in Pat Ricard. Something I mentioned already, I'll just illustrate one more time is the lack of protection that Lamar Jackson had. And I think it's, it's, it's worth mentioning when comparing how Lamar and Mahomes execute these plays. Mahomes wasn't hurried at all. Mahomes was on schedule. Lamar almost had to move immediately because of the D-end who was free rushing from his left side because that's the pass pro scheme that the Ravens use. Look, I think Bozeman was slow getting out there. I won't belabor that point necessarily. Let's take a look at the play side D-end here, number 98. He initially gets tangled up with Ricard and the right tackle, Phillips. And again, I think he gets a hand on this ball. Lamar still gets it out there, and Ricard finishes it off with a nice catch. Now, this concept is something that the Ravens and many other teams in the NFL use repeatedly. This is against the Bengals in Week 7. Marquise Brown is down here to the boundary. He's going to go in motion. He's going to run the wheel to the top side now. Ricard is and Andrews are on the right-hand side. Ricard is going to delay release, so he's going to pass pro initially, and then release to the play side, which is to the field. And the clear-out route, once again, is going to come from the number one receiver, in this case, Devin DuVernay. Lamar actually does have a better pocket to throw from this time, even – even though Alejandro Villanueva is beat off the left side once again by Trey Hendrickson. I believe this ball is actually caught by Marquise Brown, but just slightly out of bounds. You can see Ricard here getting tangled up with the D-end again, which is his assignment, and, and then releasing to the play side. So it's a similar concept as the first play I showed you, but it's not out of the same exact formation. It's not the same exact pass pro necessarily. Conceptually, we're talking about the same thing. You have the clear out route to the play side, a wheel route, and then a later developing route into the flats on the same side of the football field. All right, so now we're going to look at about four or five plays that are all max blitz, cover zero situations. Now, we as Ravens fans after 2021, we understand what the Dolphins did in terms of how they blitzed six or seven guys, played cover zero with everyone at the sticks. I call it sticks coverage. Other people have different names, blitz zero, whatever. And on this play, the Bills are going to get immediate pressure in Josh Allen's face. Tyron Matthew and a couple of other guys are going to get pressure off the right side. They're trying to sift out the coverage by moving the right running back out. They figure out that it's man. No one's able to adjust the route. No one recognizes and adjusts the route quick enough. Josh Allen gets immediate pressure, throws the ball away. The, the difference here in terms of evaluating this from a Ravens perspective is the Bills did not know this was coming. They, they knew that there was a bunch of guys lined up near the line of scrimmage, don't get me wrong, but the Chiefs weren't showing their intentions the same way that the Dolphins did 30-plus times. You can see that no receivers looking back at Josh Allen. He's not being given any hot routes or any, any release routes to get rid of the ball quickly versus this setup that the Dolphins gave us so many times in Miami. We knew what was coming, particularly as you got into the second half. Now, now, the point of breaking down that Bills play and then showing two or three Ravens plays is not to illustrate that they were similar offensive concepts, because clearly they were not. We didn't even really get to see the Bills run an offensive concept. I'm, I'm going to break this down one more time. I've broken this down in video form multiple times. What was happening is all the DBs for the Dolphins and two or three of the guys lined up on the line of scrimmage were just reacting to Lamar's eyes, just reacting to his face mask. You can see these two droppers, they're dropping and out of there wherever Lamar looks that's where they're going so he can't throw a slant or something right over the middle of the field because those guys theoretically could get their arms in the way and, and you'll be able to see from this next play what happens when the Dolphins interior defenders their guys that are dropping out of there don't react to Lamar's face mask in this case pre-snap they think Lamar's going to go to his right they all drop out of there to the right and he brings it back to the slant to Bateman on the backside. all right so let's bring this second example to a head by showing how the Tennessee Titans attacked the Dolphins cover zero in in week 17 I think it was a 34 to 3 win over the Dolphins what they did was they isolated the safety up here man to man on the backside halfback now, they had weeks to do this because the Dolphins had shown this look multiple times. But look, the Ravens in their game down in Miami on that Thursday night, they had 30, 35 chances to look at this and see how the Dolphins were running it. And no one could come up with an offensive concept to defeat it from the offensive coordinator on down. Let's, let's take a look at the end zone angle and see how easily Ryan Tannehill and the Titans offense manipulated these guys. They motion the tight end over, and what that does is that brings a DB with them, in this case Rowe. 
and then that leaves this safety number 29 backside man to man on the halfback like I mentioned watch how easily these guys in the middle of the for of the defensive formation are manipulated by Ryan Tannehill's face mask I rewind it again so you can see three guys reacting exclusively to where Ryan Tannehill's looking trying to get in the window of a slant opens up the back side of the field completely for a huge gain. Now, now it did get called back for a penalty which limited the game, gain somewhat, and I'm not pretending that the screen would work every time, but you see how easy it was for them to take advantage. So that subset of plays illustrated how differently the Ravens tried to attack the Dolphins' sticks or blitz zero coverage as opposed to the Titans. Here you're going to get what is essentially the exact same play by the Bills that the Ravens used twice in two-point or short yardage situations. It's been a go-to for the Bills for two years. Called Y-Hide, it looks like split zone. The halfback and the tight end initially are lined up on opposite sides in the system that I'm familiar with. We would call that B-Gun. If the tight end and halfback are on the same side, they would call it A-Gun. The Bills do run out of A-Gun as well. Let's take a look at the play. It's against the Chiefs. It's down in the goal line. You can see the halfback is on Josh Allen's left. The tight end is on the right. It's going to look like split zone. The Chiefs are in cover zero, so Tyron Matthew is responsible for the tight end. There will be a mesh between Josh Allen and the running back, and then the tight end runs out into the flats behind the formation. I call this Y hide. One element to this concept that the Bills use that the Ravens do not is they're essentially running a pick route with a backside X or split end. He runs his route right at Tyron Matthew, forcing him to go underneath or over the top of the screen or the pick which essentially puts him in a position that's impossible to defend the tight end in the flats. You can see Matthew's looking right at him. He's going to cross the formation, and, and he really can't get in any position to stop this at all because the, tight, the split end gets in his way. Let's look at how the Ravens run it. Two-point situation against the Colts. It's B-gun again, so the tight end's on the left. The halfback is on the right. Mark Andrews is going to cross underneath the offensive lineman here, mesh between Lamar and the running back, Latavius Murray. Now, in this case, the Colts are running zone, not man. Devin DuVernay does not pick this safety. The Ravens use Marquise Brown and Devin DuVernay to kind of run like two crossers, uh, almost like mesh, and Andrews is, is able to out-leverage this zone defender whose eyes are in the backfield. Now, I should point out this is a very common short yardage play. Multiple teams in the NFL use this concept, whether it's how to A gun or B gun. So another example of the Ravens' passing concepts being somewhat similar to other teams, I would offer that the Ravens were a little predictable in these situations. This is a two-point conversion against the Steelers. You can see same setup, B gun. Minka Fitzpatrick is supposed to be on Mark Andrews man-to-man. -man. His eyes are in the backfield again. Andrews is wide open. Because of T.J. Watt's pressure, Lamar stepping up to throw the football, we're unable to complete the pass. From the All-22 angle, you'll see here it's the immediate pressure, the, the explosiveness of T.J. Watt that is the difference and, and really gives the defense a chance to actually make a stop, even though Mark Andrews obviously had the ball in his hands. All right, so there you have it. That's, that's part one of two, at least, in terms of covering the Ravens passing offense as it relates to the rest of the NFL. I would say the first and third examples that I gave you um, illustrate similar or, or identical concepts being used, I guess, actually. And the second section of plays obviously illustrates how differently the Titans were able to attack that blitz zero sticks coverage versus the Ravens in a situation where they knew it was coming. Now, this first video might seem overly supportive of the Ravens' passing concepts because you do have two teams, the Bills and the Chiefs, using identical plays that the Ravens use in particular situations. I will caution you. I have found, I have found six teams using the same concepts as the Ravens. However, there are elements that those teams use to kind of spice up those plays in a way that the Ravens do not consistently do. Let me know what you guys think of, of my film breakdown and me packaging similar plays together from different NFL teams with the intent of hope, hopefully furthering the dialogue of what does the Ravens passing attack do well, what does it not do well, uh, and moving that conversation hopefully forward from just the elementary and really basic level discussions that I've witnessed on social media so far. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you enjoy the content, please consider doing so. And, and let me know if you have any Ravens passing concepts you'd like me to look at. Specifically, in the second part of this series, I'd like to look at mesh concepts and over concepts, which the Ravens use repeatedly.